by Patrick. Are you there, my friend? I sure am, Tom. How, How are, are you? Pat? Long time no see. <laughs> Long time no see. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Tell me a little bit about O'Hara. Okay. Bloop. Is that little enough? No, no. <laughs> uh, interesting character. Uh, for the first time, I, I kind of get to play basically me. Um, in roles I've played in the past, as in an Arnold or a Miyagi, I've always had to assume um, the body and the mind and the innards of uh, a, 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 a character, you know. But uh, this is kind of centered on a guy like me who happens to be a cop, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Do you think that they're going to give you enough time, Pat, to make it the hit that it deserves to be? Or are they going to give you this kind of make it in five or six and then it's over? Hard to say, you know. <laughs> Once the network gets all of the product, uh, no, hopefully uh, they'll, they'll put their juices behind this. I think uh, they feel pretty good about it so far. Pat, let, let me switch away to, from the roles that you play to your personal life. A child with not an easy background, tuberculosis, long time before you were walking, and then an incredibly difficult and painful experience of, in, of internment in your own country. Want to talk yeah. a little bit about that, if you would, please, Pat? Well, uh, when I was a youngster, of course, um, and if you're flat on your back and you're, and you're in uh, plaster casts from shoulder to knee uh, and you can't walk and you're prone and, and life goes on around you, there's, there's not too much sense you can make out of all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and while it was um, a really, really tough time for me, uh, hey, there were kids in my ward that died, so at least I made it through something. And then by um, medical magic to get an operation that uh, fixed my back and new medicines that drove away the tubercle bacilli, they used to call it. Uh, and then being able to get up and walk and, and, and at 11 walk from a hospital into camp was uh, nothing of my doing. I, I was pre-puberty and I was just happy to be up and walking and joining my parents. But Pat, uh, but does that kind of I, I didn't I didn't understand the barbed wire and and putting people away like that. But those things uh, probably, while they never left a, a scar on me so much, they um, left a lot of bad memories. Do you feel still a little bit of bitterness? After all, you're an American. Why would an American yeah. be placed in a camp? So is there bitterness, or does it kind of dissipate over time, Pat? I don't think I ever had what you call bitterness. You know, uh, I, I, it caused me to look at life differently, for sure. sure. Um, uh, and, and subsequently, uh, later on, we had the Korean thing and then the Vietnam thing. Uh, I'll never understand wars, never. Pat, you've had a little bit of experience here at Channel 5, if I may change the subject. Blind Alley. Yeah. Good memories from that wonderful project? Yep, yep, yep. I'm just, I'm just sorry that it didn't um, play into more markets and reach uh, other people. Uh, it's always uh, exhilarating to work with uh, fine acting people like Cloris Leachman and to work with a dynamite company out of a little local station in Boston and do something unusual. The, was, ver uh, the very same studio, Pat, that we're actually doing our Good Day show right now. L let me yeah. ask you about getting into comedy. How did it come about that you became a nightclub <laughs> comic? Long story. <laughs> Give it to me in a short period, Pat. Well, actually, I was, I was um, in my late 20s, and I was working for um, an aerospace firm, uh, a big one. Uh, and I was in the uh, computer operations area where everyone with their little magic diplomas were way, way, way ahead of me. I was, I was totally out of my realm hmm. and quite lost. Um, and in the meantime, I was 190 pounds and frustrated and <laughs> didn't know where I was going in life. So after a lot of self-examination, uh, I kept asking myself, what do you really want to do? the one thing you really want to do. 
And like we all have a little Jiminy Cricket on our shoulder, mine kept saying show business. So I quit what I was doing and I started working clubs around San Francisco. That was the beginning. Successful at first or did you really have to bang down the doors? Oh, uh, it's, it's never easy in the beginning for anybody in our business. Do you still do it, Pat? Do you still do the comedy routines or are you really committed now to acting? Pretty much committed now to acting, yeah. Uh, well, you know, we put in long days doing television, as you well know, uh, 12, 14 hour shooting days. And it leaves one very little time to um, go out there and face audiences. Although I, I still get the urge, you know, I, I'd still like to get out there sometime. Le leaves that. one not too much time to face audiences. Does it leave enough time to be with one's children, Pat? Uh, hardly. Hardly. I uh, get to see my family on weekends. Hopefully. That's all. <laughs> and they don't get to see me because I'm watching football. <laughs> <laughs> How old are the kids now, Pat? Uh, 16, just turned 16, and recently 12, the youngster. Do you wish you could spend more time with them, or do you work to spend more time with them, or, or what? Yeah, all my, all my uh, spare time that I can find, uh, we try to do things together. You know, uh, Sundays, uh, I'm usually at my uh, little one's basketball games, and the 16-year-old... Uh, left us. She went to school back east. She's in Connecticut going to high school. Well, that's good. We'll take care of her out here, Pat, for you. We thank you for giving us this chance to speak with you.